1. This was about two years ago, and it isn't some big, crazy story with a flashy ending with a manager, complaint, or a flurry of fists. Nah, this is a story about some old dude and his really awkward questions and comments. First, a little backstory. This man was not a total stranger. In fact, he is a frequent customer at my dad's job at a print shop, who always gives the boss a hard time. He stops by where I work, which is a chocolate store in my local area in the mall. He is a regular mall walker who I see on occasion, and used to flirt with one of my co-workers. He also has seen me at my job on many occasions. He wasn't some asshole, just a really weird yet polite old man. We're gonna call him James. Onto the story. My girlfriend Liz and I were walking around a classic little store with a yellow star icon, and the big words Walcart. You know where it is, and I wanted to make some dumb joke. On that day, I was wearing a blue shirt with skulls on the front and back, and a pair of blue jeans with black shoes. Whilst walking and checking out clothing, I catch out of the corner of my eye, a short old man waving me down. When I turned over, I could not believe my eyes. James was here, and he was waving me down. I turned to ignore him, but when I did, he walked over to Liz and I, and asked me to come down with him. Now, I'm not much of a jerk. I know the guy in a sense, and I'm not just gonna tell him off. So I oblige and follow with Liz behind me. When we stopped, we stood in front of an aisle, and the following conversation ensued. Okay, which socks look best with these dark-colored pants? And he shows off a pair of black pants, then a pair of black socks and brown socks. In my mind, I'm thinking, what the actual fuck? I can see Lizzie's face contort like she was about to laugh. Uh, Alright, so I would of course think that the black socks would be best choice for, well, black pants. You're so very right. God bless you, young man. Then I thought it was over. I told him that I was happy to help and went on my way with Liz. Liz was stunned and started cackling softly, though she seemed a little bit distraught, which is understandable. After all, she has never met this person in real life, but nope. It was literally three minutes after we walked away when he asked us to come back. I wasn't angry about this, but I was very confused and, to be honest, thought this was entertaining and just straight up awkward. He then pulls out two different pairs of black socks, one a very soft set of dress socks and one a thick sports-style pair of socks. Then part two happens. Now which of these two socks would work better for formal wear? I'm barely keeping my composure. I'm sorry, what was that? These socks. I'm trying to have nice socks for when I go to formal places. I don't know what was holding me back from busting out laughing, but I'm so glad I was able to keep my composure and keep a gentle smile. And I was so shocked Liz didn't just pull me along and say we don't have time for this. I'm not sure I would think the dress socks would be the obvious choice, but those sports socks could be used for anything else other than formal wear. I can't say for certain, but I'd say the sports socks since they're more versatile. But I don't work here, so I wouldn't know. After that reply, the rest of the conversation was a bit hazy. I do remember some key points, though. He told me that I seemed like a 1930s kid who was very knowledgeable, told me not to move in with my girlfriend since it's a trap, and said, God bless you, young man. God bless you, young man. God bless you, young man. All the while, I'm keeping my composure and trying to keep Liz in check so either her anxiety doesn't go through the roof or she doesn't laugh so hard that it makes us both lose it. After that conversation, we finally put some serious distance between us and James. That's when we hug and start laughing. Liz and I were so shaken up from that whole awkward encounter, since we both have anxiety issues, but it was definitely a story to remember. 2. I work at an Australian electronics store where we sell tons of products that range from the smallest hobby components to soldiering irons. Batteries to power supplies, solar panels to wind turbines, security cameras to fake security cameras, and literally everything in between. If you're a tech hobbyist in Australia, you probably have purchased lots of stuff from us. In my particular store, the counter is about halfway down the length of the store, and offset to the right-hand side against the wall, so you can see the entire store if you're just chilling behind the counter, if people don't want to be helped. The company also requires that you really go to the ends of the earth for each customer as well. 
stopping just short of actually doing the customer's hobby or project for them. Because then we'd be liable if it went wrong. This ultimately means that we talk one-on-one -on -one with each customer for the best part of five to ten minutes. So we can upsell the shit out of you. So we can best supply you with the products you want and need. But sometimes customers just don't want to listen. This particular story is from about a week ago. When an older gentleman came in the store while I was putting together one of the hobby kits that are heavily discounted for our rewards program members. This gentleman seemed quite switched on, but seemed afraid of technology. He came up to the counter holding his phone gingerly in his hand. It was a Galaxy Note 9, and was being held almost entirely at arm's length for the entire walk from the front door to the counter. My duty manager obviously recognized this guy because the moment he came in, the duty manager was almost running out the back for a smoke break. As the customer approached the desk, he asked if I could help him with his phone problems. He doesn't want to take it back to his carrier to get it fixed because they'll... Just upgrade me to get a new one to get me out of there. Being the, now, only staff member in the store, I oblige and stand up from the project I have on the bench in front of me. He tells me that his phone is no longer charging and that it usually would charge while it was turned on. But he forgot to charge it last night, so his phone died. But now it's just a picture of a water droplet and a crossed out lightning bolt, but he never got the phone wet. I ask him how long it's been doing it for and if he has the charger on him. Apparently it has done while it was turned off for weeks, but he never had an issue while it was turned on. He hands me his phone charger and I plug it into the set of isolated test plugs we have on the workbench to confirm that the phone is indeed displaying the moisture in charge port pictographs. I unplug the phone from his charger and plug it into my phone charger which is nearby, trying to eliminate whatever possibilities I can but get the same result. The problem is definitely the phone. My old phone had a filled-in charge controller and filled in much the same way as this phone had. So I started to wiggle the connector in the socket to see if it would be caused by some kind of damage to the USB-C port. The cable happened to wiggle in the port more than usual, but only in one direction. Confused, I unplug the phone and gently plug it back in to see if it's going in all the way. Turns out that there is debris in the charging port. Probably a dust bunny or something benign like that. I turn to the customer and tell him the good news as I reach for the little metal toothpicks we have for this problem. The phone is basically fine, just some dust or dirt in the charger port. As I go to explain that I can easily fix the problem here and now, I would expect the customer to be quite happy and satisfied with the fact that their phone is easily fixed with no cost to them. But no. This guy snatches the phone out of my hand and starts to get a bit nasty with me, telling me that I don't know what I'm on about and that he will just go to his carrier's local store and get them to deal with it. I hand him back his charger and tell him that I'd be happy to fix it here if you'll let me. It's just some debris in the port. But he seems to get angrier about the fact that I'm just trying to help, and huffs at me, telling me that it's fine and that his carrier will deal with it as he storms out of the store. The funny thing is, the store for his carrier usually sends their customers with little problems like that to us, because we have more time to dedicate to that kind of troubleshooting. Or they use the same metal toothpicks that we do to do the same job. As I left for lunch, I saw him heading back to my store with the phone, still at arm's length. Turns out that the carrier store sent him back to us, and my duty manager ended up scraping out the socket for him anyway. 3. This story takes place roughly two years ago at a local grocery store chain. Let's call it Cromart. I did work at Cromart at this time, but at a completely different location. Also, I didn't drive at this time due to medical reasons. Cast are as follows. Me, 19-year-old tired shopper blasting MCR on headphones. Mom, my mother, doesn't talk much either. EW, just picture your not-so-friendly neighborhood Karen. NC, nice customer. E, employee who deserves a raise. M, manager, doesn't talk much. After finishing up with a long tech rehearsal for an upcoming musical I was a part of, my mom picked me up to go straight home. Alas, that is not what happened. Halfway there, she tells me that we need to run by Cromart. Upon arrival, I was ready to get out of there, so I suggested we split up to cover more ground. Since I've gone to this location as long as I could remember, I knew exactly where everything was. Which was when NC approached me. 
NC taps me on the shoulder. I remove my headphones. Yes, ma'am. Would you mind telling me where the Fluffledoofers are located? Uh, sure, it's on aisle 12. Thank you very much. She proceeds to walk away. I went ahead and started playing my music again, and as I looked around, I saw E.W. talking to E. with what seemed to be an angry manner. As soon as I saw her point in my general direction, I looked away and went about my shopping. That's when she struck. Excuse me, manager, you over there? I know it's impossible she's talking about me since I'm not a manager. That's when I felt a tug on my shoulder. And as I turned around, I saw a very angry E.W. in my face. I take out my earbuds. Ma'am, please don't touch me. I do what I want. I'm a fucking paying customer. I take a step back. Cool. So am I. So if... No, you're not. You work here. I know it. Ma'am, I'm trying to tell you he doesn't work here. Yes, he does. Only reason you're saying otherwise is because he's your manager. Note, at this time, I was a 5'5 teenager wearing a red button-up shirt, black tie, and reddish jeans. Nothing close to Cromart attire. Again, I don't work here. Shut up, just shut up, you work here. I saw you helping out another person. I know you're his manager, and I want him fired this instant for not getting my candles. If you don't, I'll have your job too. Knowing this isn't going anywhere, I decided to have some fun. Alright, alrighty, she's caught us. I'm only pretending not to be the manager to upset you. Now what's the problem? Finally. This idiot keeps telling me you're out of the candles I like, and there's none in the back. Well, I guess we're out. No, you're not. I know it. You're right. We're lying again. E, you're fired. Go get someone higher up than me, because I'm fired too. E, who's been silent to this, catches on and goes to get the manager. Well, before you're fired, you need to get me that candle. Find it yourself. You said you'd have my job, and guess what? You've had it. Your boss will be here in a moment, so I suggest you get to work. She's visibly shocked. Wait, what? At this time, E and M show up. What's going on here? Oh, hey, boss. Here's your new employee. I hired her to take my place since I'm fired now. No, I don't want... But of course you do. You said you could do it better. Isn't that right, boss? M's trying to suppress a grin. Sir, you don't even work here. No, oh, I know, but she insists that I am. But you do work here. No, ma'am, he doesn't. Looks at me. Sir, you can go now. He filled me in already. Sorry for the holdup. That's all right. It's been fun working for y'all. I leave M, E, and E, W to sort things out. A short while later, I was waiting for my mom up front. When I look over and see E speaking to NC. NC sees me, waves, and starts walking towards me with E who had a worried look on his face. Sorry to bother you again. Oh, it's no problem. What can I do for you? Nothing really. I just wanted to tell you how great of an employee he is and how helpful he was. Ma'am, I appreciate this, but... It's all right. Don't be embarrassed. I just believe that management deserves to know good workers who help their customers. Uh, Ma'am, I'm glad you had a great experience and all, but I don't actually work here. You don't? But you seem to know where everything is, and you were quite helpful. And that's because I've gone to the store for as long as I can remember. As for helping you, I didn't mind because you asked nicely. Oh, well, I'm sorry to bother you. Have a wonderful day. She leaves to go find the actual manager. It was an interesting day, to say the least. Thanks for listening, everyone. 4. Today I was reminded of an event a couple weeks ago, which I was thanked for by the wife of a local drunk, LD, for refusing to fuel his drinking addiction. So a little background on this. I've been working for this store for well over five years now, and I've seen this guy come in almost every day to buy a small bottle of cheap store brand vodka. Mind you, he wasn't bad at first, at least not when I started cashiering up front after spending 16 months in maintenance. But I did notice LD had a thing for being a bit of an asshat when it comes to personal requests, for him to stop either flirting with younger cashiers or doing something he knows the person hates, me included in this. Years have gone by, and I'm now a customer service manager, and LG is now this belligerent drunk who needs his vodka, and intentionally disregards any request to behave himself within the store. Cast, me, local drunk, LD, self-checkout host, host, closing cashier, C, and customer service associate, CSA. Now, this is a pretty normal night, seeing as it was just about close to closing down customer service for the night. 
and there's a slight line of people at the closest register to customer service. It was there I saw local drunks standing in line with no items, obviously waiting to get his nightly vodka with a stupid grin on his face. And he sees me in my CSA. Keep in mind, my associate and myself are small women. Her about 4 foot 11, while I'm 5 foot 2. And he's easily 6 foot 3, and our cashier is the only male associate we have on the clock at the time, and he's no taller than 5 4. No sooner I realize what he is getting. I am called over by my self-checkout host to help with an issue on one of the machines. She believes I use magic to make things work again, and have to reapply it every so often. I eventually solve the problem, bills jammed upon exit, and customer needed their change, and walk back to customer service. Something catches my eye as a penny is seen on the ground just in front of the gate that keeps customers out. I ask my CSA where this penny came from, and she tells me it was flung over there by LD. At this, I turn back to the open register and see that the man is gone. So much for telling him off right then, but I do a little more digging as to why he did that and discovered that LD, in fact, flicked over two pennies towards my CSA, and the second one clipped the side of her arm. No damage, but she was helping a customer at the time, and he could have easily hit that person instead. This made me angry as the proverbial last straw broke. I had taken statements from both my cashier who saw LD do that and my CSA and brought it to my manager. Now she didn't do anything to my knowledge, but what happens the next day would have fixed that problem right up. Next day he comes in mid-afternoon, got the early dinner rush going and lines building up at all my open registers. I see LD standing in line at customer service to buy a few cheap items and purchase the cheap vodka. Now I have more associates and another customer service manager with me, but I took point to greet him and ask what he wants. What can I do for you today? Smiling innocently, as if I didn't know what he did the night before. You know what I want? Store brand vodka. At this, I just shake my head slowly. I'm sorry, but I will not be serving you your vodka any longer. I will gladly ring you out for the other items. At this, he just gives me this dirty look that basically said, how dare you, as I motioned him to the register and open counter for his items. Why not? Due to the incident last night, you have been barred from purchasing alcohol at this location. Once more, he scowls at me as he slowly pushes his other items to me. What incident? I didn't do anything. Not according to my associates. No more vodka will be served to you here as I ring in the two cans and cheap package of hot dogs. He just pulls himself up, trying very hard to intimidate me as he crossed his arms to make himself seem more angry. Then you just lost your best customer. I just smile and wave after he was done paying for his stuff. That's okay. I'll be sure to have a chat with your wife next time I see her. I really did have a lovely chat with his wife, who is really kind and wants to leave LD's sorry hide because of his terrible behavior. She thanked me today, which brings me to write this up and share it with everyone here. Thank you all for listening. 5. To start this off, it is the end of June, and I start getting school supplies for my cousin. She has seven kids, and getting them back to school clothes is enough to break her wallet, so I help her with the supplies. Mind you, she has two kids going to high school this year, so now I gotta buy those T1 calculators. The rest of the kids are in middle school and elementary school, so I can get away with getting them Dollar Tree supplies. For those who don't know Dollar Tree, literally everything is a dollar or less. So I order their school supplies online in bulk. Pens, pencils, markers, crayons, paper, folders, notebooks, etc. Altogether spending a little over $200, which considering I got a lot of supplies that can last them this year and next, I find that as a steal. So, while at work, I got a notification that my items were at my Dollar Tree ready for pickup. Since they are already paid for, all I have to do is pick them up and leave. Immediately after work, I head over. For context, I'm dressed in business casual. Some black slacks and a teal blouse. I talk to the cashier who calls the manager. He then goes to the back to get my supplies. I tell the cashier I'm going to shop a little if that's okay. She told me she would let her boss know. I take a basket and head down the aisles. I grab some cleaning supplies, snacks, toys for the kids. 
I'm in the toy aisle looking at a styrofoam football to see if that's something the boys would like. I decide to get them putty instead. I felt someone tap me on my shoulder and I turn around. Yes? Do you know how much this is? She asked, holding up a broom. I give her a confused look. It's a dollar. Thank you. She leaves and I thought that was it. I used to work for Dollar Tree and this question is one of the stupidest questions I used to get all the time while working there. While in the pet aisle, grabbing a cat ball for my rabbit, he loves to throw them around his cage, I hear a loud, Ma'am! I flinch for a minute because my attention was somewhere else. When I looked up, it was the woman from before. Can you open a register? It's getting busy up here. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't work here. But you gave me a price check. I just looked at her confused and point up to the banner along the wall of the store. What does that say? <sighs> it says everything is at... Before she finished her statement, she turned around and left a little embarrassed. I make it up to the register and the manager is at the end waiting for me with my bulk order. I purchase my items and I head out of the door to load my car, returning for my bulk items, and the manager helped me load my car. The lady that asked me to open a register walked by with her bags and pointed at me. Excuse me, sir, your employee was rude. She made me feel stupid and refused to open a register. I'm even more confused now. I thought that she was embarrassed because she realized I don't work here. Apparently, she was embarrassed because I had to point out that everything is a dollar and that her price check was stupid. I didn't do that intentionally, I just wanted to avoid a confrontation and have her leave me alone. The manager looks at me and says sarcastically, Don't worry, ma'am, I will make sure we have a talk. The woman looked smug as she turned on her heel and laughed. He gave me a look and we laughed as we finished loading my car. I got to my cousin's house and told them the story. The eldest, Dax, cracked a joke as he helped me take the school supplies in. Maybe it's because you started working at Dollar Tree when you were younger. You will always be their cashier. We play fought over that. Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Adventures in Fast Food and Retail, number 55. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. <sighs> well, I really need to start working out more, uh, which I'm, I'm gradually easing towards. Uh, I won't be daunted this time, and I think because... Right, used to be. Now, bear in mind, I'm 37, so I'm not a kid, but I'm not old. But uh, I used to be able to go the occasional day without sleeping. If I had to reset the old clock, I could do that no bother. And I tried to do that this weekend. Because of all these trips to the dermatologist and that, it kind of disrupted my normal schedule, so it really threw my sleeping patterns off. But I don't have to go down there anymore, thankfully. So uh, I thought, well, I'll just I'll, I'll get my sleeping schedule sorted and get back on, because kind of a night owl. But I was I was sleeping too late, even for me. And so, essentially, I ended up working really late getting the weekend videos done from, like, um... So I didn't get done really late. And I had to get up on Saturday. And I did get everything done, thank Well, obviously, I got everything done. You, you saw those videos. So I had to get up on Saturday earlier as well, because I wanted to go buy some groceries. And uh, sometimes I'll get a delivery, but I don't always like to do that. I like to actually go and pick what I'm doing. Plus, it's exercise. Uh, because I walk up and down, or I take the bike, and I ended up doing that, but because I went to bed late, it's like I went past tired, you know when you get kind of overtired and you need to rest but you can't sleep? I was in that kind of zone, and I'd set an alarm, knowing I'd have to get up at a certain time, and it was like, and that was another part of the reason why I don't think I could sleep. So... Eventually, I just got, after lying in bed for a few hours and not being able to sleep, I just got up and went and did my shopping over on Saturday. And I ended up just kind of crashing about 9pm. I thought, okay, right, I'm going to brush my teeth, go to bed. So I just did that. And I got up at 7 hours and I woke up at 4am on Sunday. And I thought, okay, fair enough, this is where we are now. I can just kind of gradually nudge things back towards normal. Right. And uh, so I went for a wee bit of a nap on Sunday afternoon. And then I did a stream at night, and that was fine. The stream actually went okay. It was quite a good stream. But um, then when I was done with that, I grabbed dinner. And I thought, okay, I'm going to... So I got another nap after the stream. And I thought, okay, I'm up now. I'll grab dinner. I was up for a wee bit. 
And I was like, you know what? I'm just not feeling good at all. Because I was starting to feel quite eh by that point. So I, I went to bed and I, s- I went to bed. It was about, was about 7 a.m., which is when I wanted to go to bed. For me, that'd be normal. I'd get up. It'd be kind of late afternoon. Plenty of time to go anywhere I need to go and do whatever I need to do. But I ended up sleeping till about 9 o'clock at night. Because I just felt so bad. Anytime I'd wake up, I'd be like, ugh, no, no. So I'm starting to feel a bit better now. I eventually got up. I've got my work done. Uh, which generally makes me feel better anyway, to be honest with you, once you get going. And I'm starting to feel okay now. So hopefully another proper nice rest. And I should be good to go. Okay, that's enough grumbles about my silly, irresponsible sleeping patterns. But I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening. And take very good care of yourselves.